Since setting up the workshop, being able to cut gears has been a massive goal of mine and I finally found a dividing head cheap enough and what seems to be good quality enough that warranted me buying it. So while I wait for the gear cutters and material to turn up, I thought I'd do a little review on the dividing head model number BS-0. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe. So yeah, today we're going to be unboxing this new dividing head that I've got and I'll give you my first impressions on what the quality is like and what the user capability of this thing is going to be for the home hobbyist. So stay tuned if you're thinking about getting one of these dividing heads. I'll link below where to get this for a really reasonable price. Hope you enjoy the video guys. Stay tuned. Right then, let's get this open and see what the quality is like in here. So this is a Vevo or Vivo dividing head. I think they're quite a universal sort of dividing head. Many manufacturers have made these. Oh. All right, here we go then. Dividing head manual. I'll sort of lay this out on the bench and then afterwards we're gonna have a good look through it. So we've got a test report here. Hmm. You know what, I've seen these sort of tests before from things that I've bought. I think they're pretty Mickey Mouse. So I'm not really gonna take any information off that. I might, if people want, do a comparison of what they've measured and what the actual measurements are in relation to the variation and tolerance. So let me know in the comments below guys if that's something you'll want to see. But let's carry on unboxing this. So we've got a nice chuck key. What's this? Set of clamps, T bolts. Loads of goodies. Alright, let's chuck all this to one side. Oh, that's pretty cool. You get a set of external jaws for the chuck. So that's pretty cool. So a reason I really like this kit is just the fact that it comes pretty much ready to go. You've got a chuck on there, you've got all your dividing plates. It's pretty much good to go out of the box other than a bit of setting up. Right, let's get the business out. Jesus, this is heavy. Right, one dividing head. One tail support. Another reason I went with this kit as well, I really like the fact that it comes with its own tail support. So not just for using this dividing head, this is probably gonna come in really handy for any mill work really. Right, two more dividing plates and the third one is, yeah, the third one's bolted to the dividing head. What else have we got in there? That's pretty cool. Comes with an MT2 uh, dead center. Didn't know it came with that actually, that's pretty good. Ah, and the locking pin. And I think that is it. Right, gonna unpackage all this, get all the oil and transportation grease off of it, lay it out on the bench, and when I come back, you'll see what I've just got out of the box. With everything out of the box then, I've got to say, first impressions, I'm really impressed with the overall quality of this. The castings seem really good, and so far, I've got to admit, this seems like a really good quality, but low budget sort of dividing head. So let's first of all talk about the dividing head itself. I'll come back to the tail support later, and all the little accessories you get with it, but let's focus on the dividing head and the dividing plates. Because if you're buying one of these, I imagine this is sort of what you're buying. The tail support is just sort of an added extra bonus. The dividing head. 
This basically works off a 40 to 1 gear ratio reduction. What that means is for every 40 times you turn this handle round, the dividing head will turn one time. So that gives us a massive range of gears that we can cut on this or any sort of divisions that you might want to use this for other than gears. Straight out of the box then you get three different dividing plates and this is really good because it means you can use the dividing head for a whole array of di different divisions. If you want to use one of these dividing heads then for a really basic purpose you don't have to use the dividing plates. So at the top here we've got this scale and it goes up in increments to up to 36. So that means in theory with this you can cut a really accurate gear set up to 36 tooth. So any divisions including that sort of 2, 4, 8, you get the picture it goes up and basically how it works is you've got a locking pin here which when you know you're in position you can lock the pin through, do your cut, retract the pin, come round and the little arrow up here sort of points to the numbers along here and each whole number on here lines up roughly with the division plate. So with that in mind, you know you can quite accurately and quickly cut hexagons, squares, triangles, anything like that that can be divisible into 36, you can use this for, for really quick reference work. But the main reason I've really bought this is for gear cutting. In the next video, I want to be cutting some new gears for the mini lathe because I want to take my stepper motor off and use that on another project. So I needed a dividing head that could cut me a hundred gear tooth. And luckily, with the combination of dividing plates that we've got, we've got this one here. So it's already a 40 to one gear reduction, which is great. From that, you've just got to work out on the dividing plates, which, someone get you in focus there. So each dividing plate has got numbers on it. So we've got 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. That represents how many holes there are on this dividing plate. Which in theory is great. It now means with a combination of these dividing plates and the fact that we know this is a 40 to 1 gear reduction, we can get a massive array of gears. So that's brilliant. Right, but this is a review video. So let's give this a review and have a look it over. I'm not going to be using this on the mill today. Just going to be casting eye over it. So, like I said, this gear here locks into the plate here, which is great. The chuck that you get on here, it's a Sanoi free jaw chuck. And I've got to admit, I've got one of these Sanoi chucks on the lathe. What is it, K11100? Yeah, just quickly checking on my mini lathe. It's not the same free jaw that I've got, but it's the same make as the four jaw that I've got. And I've got to admit, as small little chucks go, this is a really good chuck to have on here. Bearing in mind, I imagine this is going to sort of set you back sort of 40, 50 pounds anyway for the um, chuck. The fact that we got this dividing head for less than 200 pounds, all in, brand new, from a reputable shop, it's really good. Moving on. We've spoke about the lock up here, and we've got another lock over here as well. So this lock here, when locked, means you can't turn the dividing head. So if you're not using this lock to lock the pins in, if you're using the dividing plate, you're going to want to lock this every time you set it to do a cut. That way you know nothing's going to move around. Because the last thing you want to do is come to the end of your work and realise you've not divided it properly. So I'm happy that these locks are really quick and easy to use. I think that's going to be really beneficial when using this over on the mill. So next thing as well. It has got a through bore. Uh, I think it's about 15 mil. I couldn't get any 20 mil stock through. So it's about a 15 mil bore. And what's brilliant about this is if you've got really long work on here, a long mandrel, something like that, you know you're just going to be able to pop it through here. So that's brilliant. So fixture wise, it's got these cutouts on the underside here, which that allows you to bolt that down to your mill table nice and secure using the original T-bolts that you already have. Another really nice function that I like about this dividing head, that if your mill's got enough clearance, you can actually use this thing like a rotary table. So we've got two bolts here, 
unlocking them will unlock the dovetail and that now allows us to swivel this around in any orientation we want. Over on the opposite side you've got a scale of where that is so you know when that's at 90 degrees you've got a perfectly vertical workpiece here. Um, you can set it to 45 anywhere between the range of 0 and does it go under that actually? Oh no it goes a little bit under sorry anywhere between 10 and 90 so you've got a 100 degree sort of radius there to work with and to lock that it's simple as do those bolts back up moving on from the dividing head then i just want to quickly look at all the little extras you get before moving on to the tail support so you get a set of three external jaws to go along with the chuck so that's pretty good get an mt2 dead center on there now this took me a little while to work out what all this was but if you want to use this without a chuck this is basically a drive dog and all the fixings you'll need to basically turn between centers so pff, I'm probably not going to use that not going to say never but for quite a while I'm probably not going to use that so that will sit here waiting until the times it is needed so that and all the fixings I'll assemble that somewhere and keep that out of mind. So, the tail support. Now, something I really like about this is just how easily adjustable the in and out part of it is. It means setting this up is going to be really easy to get this to where I want it. But, something I wasn't too happy with is trying to adjust the height on this thing is actually really like fussy and really finickety. The fact that you've got a nut and bolt that clamps this down means that when you set it to the height that you want there's no way of really holding it there when you do the nuts and bolts up. You've got to try with one hand getting them to a point that they're tight enough that they're not going to slip and then you can reach for your other spanner and do both of them up. So I'd have liked to have seen a better feature here, maybe a tapped hole and a bolt that goes straight into it. You never know, there's enough casting there that that's something I might look at doing in the future depending on how much I use this of course. If this is something that I'm not really going to use that often it's not the biggest deal because yeah once this thing's set up it's always going to be on centre most of the time with the dividing head I shouldn't have to adjust it again. But that's just a little thing I was a little bit not annoyed about but I just found a little bit finickety when trying to adjust that up and down. So overall then guys, what do I think to the BS0 dividing head? Well, straight out of the box, without physically using this on the mill, it looks like a really good kit. If you're a home hobbyist and 200 pounds is in your sort of budget to get one of these things, I think it's well worth it. Over the next week off of camera, I'm gonna fully strip this down and properly inspect all the ways and castings inside but from a first impression, outside the package sort of thing, everything looks really good. I can't see any major burrs or deformations in the castings. Everything looks really good quality. So hopefully that's a win-win there, guys. But yeah, like I said, come back next week and I'll leave a comment below just telling you guys if I found anything untoward. But other than that, I think it's a pretty good basic beginner dividing head kit. For me, as a hobbyist, I don't think I'm ever going to need to go any bigger than this. It's got enough arrangement on there that I can do many different divisions and cut many different sort of gears. So that's going to be brilliant. That about sums up this video today. Please give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this. And why not return next week when I'm going to be using the dividing head to cut some real gears over on the mill. So putting this thing straight to work. No messing, let's see what this thing can do. Other than that, have a good week guys, see you next time.